walls. Walls. Since before history began, walls have been built to divide people. Some walls keep people in, some keep people out. The most famous walls in history include the Berlin Wall, the Great Wall of China, Hadrian's Wall, but the greatest ruddy walls of all were built right here in Oxford. Who would have thought that among the dreaming spires and bastions of academia and rational thought, walls were built to divide communities and segregate the working class riffraff from their upper class posh neighbors? This is a story of snobbery, of controversy, of bricks and mortar. Yes, this is the story of the Cutterslow Walls. So join us as we step inside our blue box with a flashing light that's also a time machine and head back to the days of black and white. Oh yeah! Our story begins in 1934. Oxford Council had demolished the slums in the St. Ebbs area of the city and decided to rehouse the unfortunate occupants in a new estate built in the north of Oxford. Oh, hello, darling. Darling. Here you go. Thank you. Darling, have you heard the news? What news, darling? The Ruddy Council have only gone and purchased the land out there. They're planning to build an estate. What? I know. Hey, love, what about our new council house? Look at our new council house, I love hey, it! The council, brilliant! Brilliant! Yeah. Come on, love, it's them posh people, let's go say hello! Oh, oh no. no. Hiya! You all right? Let's go. Shall we go to the pub, love? Let's go to the pub. This way. Good God, there's only one thing for it. Uh, are you there, my good man? How much for you to build a wall? Well, I don't know. It's got to be £50 at least. Well, that sounds good to me. <laughs> Fearing his own private properties would lose their value as a result of proximity to the new riffraff, Clive Saxton of the Urban Housing Company decided to erect two walls to separate the two communities. Oi, love, come over here. What's up, love? Look at the state of this. A wall. It is a wall. Why is there a wall? Those blooming posh people across the way, they've gone and built a wall to separate us. From posh houses? From posh houses. How am I supposed to get to shops? It's five miles. And more importantly, the pub. So why have you built a wall here in Cutslow between the two communities? Well, my husband Clive, he's, he's a property developer. And uh, we realised instantly when the council decided to build that filthy estate that the commoners moving in would, would simply be devaluing our property. Isn't that right, darling? That's quite right, darling. We don't want their sort round here, you know, bringing down house prices, despoiling the area with their washing lines and their chatter, their animals fouling the streets, their children Running. Just filthy, filthy. Uh, it doesn't even bear thinking about. Do you have any legal right to build a wall here? I hardly think that's the issue. Uh, we, we own the land, you know, we spoke to the other, the other people that live on our street and they all, without fail, feel, feel exactly the same way that we do. Yes, solidarity. We have to fight against the invader, really. Uh, you know, they have no right to be here. It's hardly an issue of legality, you know. You must fight for what's yours, you know. England for the English and all that. So, yes, yeah. How do you think those chaps in the council houses feel about the wall? Uh, they, they shouldn't have moved into the area. I mean, the council are to blame, really, for building the estate. I mean, a council estate right on our, on our Cutterslow boundary. I mean, it's, it's just dreadful, you know. I mean, I, I don't expect people like that to really have feelings anyway. What were they thinking, honestly? I, if anything, the council owe us an apology to think that they could inconvenience so by building an estate next to us. I mean, how inconsiderate. Where's number 20 Sawyer Road? Oh, that's down here. But uh, there's a wall across, you see. So you'll have to go right round the town and come in the other way. Are you sure everybody on the posh side feels as you do? 
Oh, yes, definitely. Wouldn't you say so, darling? Well... Well, darling, there are the Smythes. Uh, oh, yes, I suppose. Okay, um, so the Smythes, yes, actually. Maybe they don't agree. And the Fernley Whittingstalls. Oh. Okay, so we've got the Smythes and the Fernley Whittingstalls, but apart from that, everybody feels the same way. The Hemingways, darling? The Hemingways? Okay, so the Smythes, the Fernley Whittingstalls and the Hemingways, but apart from that, everybody else on the drive agrees. Well... There were the Barrett Malts as well, darling. They went to Mitchell. Well, I don't like them anyway, so I don't think it really matters, well, darling. Like, everybody agrees, basically. Everyone who matters. So how do you feel about the posh people putting up this wall between the two communities? Well, it's wrong, isn't it? It's a joke. Aye. They didn't ask, did they? They didn't. They didn't. How does it make you feel? Well, proper angry. Proper mad. Proper mad. Proper. And they weren't the only ones displeased about the wall. In fact, there was a 26-year battle, including many violent attempts to bring the walls down. In the summer of 1935, a crowd of 2,000 people gathered in the streets, many of them students, led by Abe Lazarus, a trade union leader and communist politician, nicknamed Bill Firestone after leading a strike at the Firestone factory in London. Bill and co marched on the wall armed with pickaxes, but they failed due to police intervention. Then, in June 1938, a city engineer and two steam rollers started to demolish the wall. Oh, hello, darling. Hello. Here you go. Thank you. Darling, have you heard the news? What news, darling? The ruddy council have only gone and knocked our wall down. What? I know. This is preposterous! There's only one thing for it. Ha <laughs> ha Hey, you have good news! They've knocked the wall down! Attempts to demolish the walls continued, and once they were even destroyed by a tank on military manoeuvres. Oh, hello, darling. Darling. Here you go. Thank you. Darling, have you heard the news? Of course I have, darling. What? No, I haven't. You may laugh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the news. The Ronnie Council have only gone and knocked our wall down. Again. This is preposterous! <laughs> Eventually, in March 1959, the walls came down after the council evoked compulsory purchase of the land. The first people to cross the boundary were children from the local primary school. And finally, the two communities were brought together. My name's Dr. Percy Fonswante of Oxford University, uh, an expert in the field of urbanization. Uh... Sadly, this unfortunate occurrence has not been unique to Oxford alone. In the post-war period, in many cities in the UK, the working classes relocated away from the city centres into areas that were occupied by the middle classes. When this happened, the middle classes either moved out to the suburbs or formed gated communities, as was the case in the instance of the infamous Cutslow Wall. And so today, all that remains of the infamous Cutslow Walls is a lovely blue commemorative plaque. But 50 years on, do the social divisions that led to the creation of the wall still exist? Is Cutslow a united and happy community? Or do the walls still exist in a metaphorical sense? The barrier was erected to protect our interests. Although not snobs, we do not wish our estate to become a perfect bedlam.